Let's take a look at some excellent examples of the characteristics mentioned so far. Here we have a Ty Cobb game used bat from the 1920s, one of the finest in the marketplace. As you can see along the handle, this is Ty Cobb's classic spiral taping method. It is extremely rare to find a Ty Cobb gamer with the tape entirely intact, like this great example. This is an outstanding Duke Snyder gamer and it features the unique crisscross taping pattern I discussed earlier. Like the Ty Cobb bat, when you can find a Duke Snyder Gamer with the tape intact, it will certainly sell for a premium. This is a 1952 Stan Musial game used bat and one of the best in the hobby. As you can see on the handle, Musial's grooves are on full display. In addition, this bat features another unique characteristic. On the knob of the bat, Musual has placed his uniform number six with that famous underline almost covering the entire knob. Here we have a 1964 Elston Howard game used bat. Now Howard, like Musual, would occasionally groove or score the handles of his gamers. Here is a prime example. This Howard gamer also has unique markings on the knob. In addition to his uniform number, number 32, he also has placed the approximate weight of the bat, which is 36, in smaller marker. This is a 1996 Ken Griffey Jr. game used bat. And, as you can see by the label, it's a Nike bat. That's right, Nike manufactured bats in 1996 as an experimental run. This bat features the classic crisscross taping pattern I mentioned earlier in the program. This is a 2007 Jorge Posada game used bat. As you can see, there are two distinct characteristics. First, you have a crisscross taping pattern that Posada was known to do throughout his career. You also have a heavy layer of pine tar on the upper portion of the handle. Again, very consistent for Posada. This is a Paul O'Neill game used bat from his days with the New York Yankees. As you can see, there are two unique characteristics on this bat. First, you have the unique crisscross taping pattern along the handle. In addition to that, and when you turn the barrel over, what you see are a plethora of cleat marks. This is a Cal Ripken Jr. game used bat. And like the O'Neill bat, it contains a lot of cleat marks. This is a Mike Piazza game used bat. Piazza, one of the greatest hitting catchers, if not the greatest hitting catcher of all time, has a few different characteristics to look for on his gamers. First of all, you want to look for a very light coating of pine tar on the upper handle area if you're looking for a prototypical Piazza Gamer. While the pine tar isn't caked on, you can definitely see a light coating on the upper handle area. In addition, Piazza was also known for putting his uniform number on the knob and the barrel end of some of his gamers. Piazza's number 31 can be found on the barrel end. This time there's some fading that has occurred, but you can still make out his uniform number. Like Ripken and O'Neill mentioned earlier, Piazza was known for stepping out of the batter's box and banging his cleats with his bats. This gamer, a Mizuno bat, was his preferred bat throughout his career. There is one very important point that I would like to make. Please keep in mind that these players did not always prepare their bats in the same manner. So in other words, did Stan Musial always groove the handles of his bats? No. Did Duke Snyder always tape the handles of his bats? No, but when you find evidence such as this, it adds one more layer that the experts are looking for. You may be wondering, how can I learn about player characteristics? Well, there are various resources at your disposal. Original photographs, wire photographs, and even baseball cards can be great resources for analyzing the characteristics on player bats. In fact, the clarity is so good on some of the images that experts can occasionally photo match bats found in the hobby. It is rare, especially with older bats, but since the technology has improved over time, more and more modern era bats can be linked to specific game action. Sometimes this is a result of the grain, which is really the fingerprint of the wood, or a certain marking on the bat that can be matched. Here we have a bat display case that contains gamers from some of the greatest catchers of all time, including three different gamers from Johnny Bench. Here we have a rookie-era Johnny Bench gamer, 
A couple of bats down, we have a 1975 World Series bat. And then one bat below that one, a 1976 Bicentennial Johnny Bench Game Use bat. As you can see with the Liberty Bell branded right on the barrel. On all three Johnny Bench Gamers, you can see the same pattern of pine tar. From his rookie era bat, all the way to his 1976 Bicentennial Gamer, you can see the pine tar starting at the base of the handle and extending all the way up the bat. What's really interesting about the World Series Johnny Bench Gamer is if you look really close at the handle, you can see green bat rack paint underneath the pine tar, which is, of course, for Fenway Park. As the series developed, it went back to Riverfront Stadium, where the Reds used to play, and then back again to Fenway Park to the end of the series for games six and seven. So you can see the green bat rack paint underneath the pine tar, and as the pine tar developed, you can see the red paint on top. Coffee table books and publications, like World Series programs and yearbooks, can be outstanding resources for these characteristics. The key with photographs, whether they're original photographs or photographs found in books or publications, is to try to find ones that show the hitter at the plate. This is important because when players are posing for things like baseball cards or portraits, they often use bats as props, and these may not be the bats that they're using in gameplay. In addition to photographs, sometimes coffee table books will provide insight into the players themselves through interviews. I'm holding in my hand a book called Crack of the Bat, which is the history of the Louisville Slugger Bat Manufacturing Company. And inside this book, there is an interview with Stan Musial. During this interview, Stan Musial is quoted as saying, I never used tar and I didn't like wax. I'd scrape up the handle a little bit so I could hold it better. So, what do you think Musial is referring to? Musial is referring to the grooving we spoke of earlier. And this is coming right out of Musial's mouth. When it comes to still shots or video, the internet is home to a variety of resources. You can find valuable images from the past and present. Websites like those hosted by Major League Baseball and ESPN contain tons of video, while other sites like Getty Images and Corbis Images contain photographs from virtually all eras of the game. The quality on some of the older footage may be lacking, but it still can be helpful. Of course, these days with the sharpness of HD, identifying player characteristics is much easier. Well, there you have it. I hope these tips can help enhance your collecting experience. Collecting professional model bats can be a lot of fun, especially if you make the time to learn about the bats and players you want to collect. For more information about collecting game used bats and other sports memorabilia, visit us at psacard.com. There are hundreds of articles and guides in our library for collectors of everything from baseball cards to autographs to game used bats. See you next time and thank you from all of us at PSA, the foundation of all great collections.